When I heard that Don Detmer had won the uh, Colin Award this year, I was delighted. It seemed incredibly obvious that he was a wonderful choice. He's truly a great man in American medicine. Uh, and uh, I can think of no other individual who would be more deserving of the Maury Collin Award than, than Don Detmer. My gosh, he should have received that a long time ago. It's good. I'm glad we're doing it. <laughs> and I know Colin would be delighted. Don was the right person. In the right place. At, at the, the right, right time. time. Don Eugene Detmer, yes, his parents named him Don, not Donald, is born in 1939 in a small Kansas farming community, rich in culture and steeped in religious tradition. I actually saw a few of the very last great dust bowl storms. Yeah, and then I was in a couple tornadoes, and my sister's Dorothy, but her dog wasn't Tono. So, I mean, I really had very much a Kansas experience. <laughs> when Don is in junior high, his father, who drills oil wells, moves the family from their central Kansas farming environs further west to the town of Great Bend. And Great Bend was cowboy oil country. And very different mindsets, very different psychologies, and so those shaped my character. Uh, we were the last house on the edge of town, and a farmer up the hill said, you can ride my ponies if you can catch them and stay on them. And uh, they were, some of them as mean as dirt, you know, try to drag you off on barbed wire fences. But it was fun. It was really a nice childhood. And so it's there, in what's more or less the middle of nowhere, that young Don Detmer discovers the path that leads him to a life of achievement and acclaim in medicine and health sciences. In high school, I um, uh, got heard about a science and math camp that the University of Kansas was having when I was a sophomore in high school. And I applied and luckily enough was accepted. Don's appreciation runs deep for the way he was raised and mentored early on by his grandparents, his older brother and sister, the community as a whole, and especially his parents, with mom getting special praise. She thought it was really important that I should go to Sunday school, so I had seven years of perfect attendance to Sunday school, and as a result of that, I am not late to meetings. If I don't show up at a meeting, I'm not going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had that so drilled into me. After high school, Don heads for what turns out to be a rather unconventional college experience. I went to the University of Kansas and I spent a year in England. And I came back from my year in England as a, uh, and I didn't get credits for those things. So I actually got into medical school at KU without an undergraduate degree. So I'm still 14 hours, 15 hours short of a undergrad, which I'm thinking about doing one of these days just to get my undergraduate degree. I got my medical degree from Kansas, so I did get a degree from <laughs> Kansas. In 1961, as Don prepares to enter medical school, he and his life companion, Mary Helen, decide to get married. My wife is from Wichita. We met at the University of Kansas and a great partner. We just had our 49th wedding anniversary, so 50s next year. and. Uh, but it's funny, she accuses me of being from the enthusiasm belt. She didn't call it the Bible belt, she called it the enthusiasm belt. His enthusiasm is infectious. Um, it's hard not to uh, catch the bug when you're around him. Um, and it, that, that's really a pleasure to be around as somebody who has that sort of drive and vision and, and passion for what he does. He creates an environment where you don't want to let him down. From KU, Don sets out to become a surgeon. It's 1965, and although he's headed for Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, Don decides to spend a month at Boston Children's Hospital. In fact, actually operated with Bob Gross, who was sort of the father of pediatric heart surgery, and then went to Hopkins. Uh, Vivian Thomas taught me how to do adrenalectomies in dogs. You'll recall he's the man who helped work with Dr. Blaylock, Alfred Blaylock, to do the Blue Baby operation. Uh, Blaylock looked over my shoulder and went, what are you doing there, son, when I was <laughs> working one day? And so I told him. Uh, so it's, it's fascinating. I was just right at a flexion point of generations. Dr. Detmer does two years at Hopkins and in 1967 moves to the clinical center at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. The history has always been really interesting to me and so the National Library of Medicine, of course, was something I really jumped on when I came to NIH. Uh, we really enjoyed uh, Washington and it gave me a chance to see and think about health policy. 
1969, it's time to move again, this time to Duke University to complete his surgical training. And after that, in 1972, Don gets some postgraduate work as the first fellow of the fledgling Institute of Medicine in the nation's capital. Then in the summer of 1974, Don begins enhancing his management portfolio with a summer at the Harvard Business School en route to his first real full-time job at the University of Wisconsin. And I was able to uh, have an appoint, a joint appointment in preventing medicine and surgery, which doesn't happen a lot, uh, but in Madison it was okay. <laughs> so I ran the vascular service and uh, then also taught and developed the first master's program in the country to teach uh, doctors, nurses, and others uh, management, administrative medicine. Additionally, Don serves as team doctor for the Wisconsin Badgers. It's at Utah that Dr. Detmer's interest in informatics begins to blossom, especially when Donald A.B. Lindbergh comes to give a speech. And since we're sitting in the Hotel Utah overlooking Mormon Square, I wasn't sure if his religious beliefs permitted him to join me in an old fashion. But it turns out they did. <laughs> we were able to get a couple of them down, and we, uh, we became friends, and we've been friends ever since. So I'm very delighted that he's honored by this wonderful organization. And he and his wife Mary, and my wife Mary Helen and I uh, hit it off. And it wasn't too long after that that he was kind enough to invite me to join the Board of Regents of the library. So then I really was off and running in, in informatics. My strength has really been more to what uses can we put this? What should the country, what should the nation, what should the world be thinking about in terms of how these uh, opportunities uh, can enhance really how, how we do our work. And that IOM CPR report embodies what will become one of Don's core convictions. Healthcare that's safe, efficient, effective, timely, patient-centered, equitable. Everything that um, we worked on had to fall into that sweet spot, otherwise it wasn't right for Amia. With the IOM CPR report and beyond, Don becomes ever more tightly woven into the fabric of Washington's healthcare decision makers. Unbelievable, actually low, but but it was 800-year-old university, 100 libraries right there in town in London, and then of course the UK was moving into the electronic health record. We were still twiddling our thumbs over here, and they were moving forward. Not long after the Detmers moved back to Charlottesville, Virginia, Charlie Safran, the head of the American Medical Informatics Association, comes calling, hoping that the newly created position of CEO at AMIA will lure Don out of his planned retirement. And it's not necessarily an easy sell. And I'm very, very happy that Don was recruited to do that. Charlie uh, Safran deserves a lot of credit for charting that course and for taking the, having the courage to make that recommendation when a lot of people thought he was a little bit daft. But I think it was a good idea. Luckily, with many demands on his part about what his role would be and how he would operate and uh, his ability to travel to his farm whenever he wanted to, uh, he, uh, he, he agreed. And, uh, you know, the, the rest of the story is just wonderful because he was the right person at the right time. If I was going to ride that horse instead of my horse at home, I wanted to see it move. And, and it worked out really incredibly well really extremely well, much better. I had the most fun in that job, I think, anything I've ever done. I think I probably accomplished the most, too. And indeed, that was transformational for Amy because of his passion for the field, his knowledge, uh, his management skills, uh, and uh, his ability to, to uh, really uh, bring policy uh, to the organization in ways that uh, have changed its visibility and its impact. Happily, there was a fabulous staff in Bethesda at the Bethesda office. I mean a terrific staff. He brought us instant credibility on Capitol Hill in Washington DC by virtue of his contributions to many important federal committees and um, work uh, through the Institute of Medicine and many other important um, national projects. All who have met or worked with Don are struck by his ability to relate to virtually everybody. 
And just how does he do that? Well, he has a stable of sayings, Donisms, if you will. And he'll throw in these very um, attainable terms, you know, they relate it to fishing and horseback riding and you know, heading the boat towards the rocks and turning it just before. He would basically get to some point in a, a very uh, complicated discussion and he, he'd just turn to you and he'd say, that dog won't hunt. And, yeah, I'm not a hunter, but you, you got the idea pretty quickly. One of the things you learn from working with him is that no idea is too serious to be held up as a joke. I mean, you just have to, that's part of the game. I would be willing to bet that on the occasion of his receiving this award, I don't see how it can get away from showing us a dog cartoon. <laughs> In recognition of Don's outstanding work as Amy is president and CEO, the Don Eugene Detmer Award for Health Policy Contributions in Informatics is created in 2008 and presented to Don. Very wonderful of Amy to do this. It's a gift that keeps on giving, and obviously I'm, I'm both honored and pleased about it. Additionally, Don feels that the Detmer Award might help draw young informaticians into the policy aspect of informatics. On the more personal side of the ledger, Don and Mary Helen, who is a published poet in her own right, have two lovely daughters, and their extended family includes a son-in-law and three grandchildren. Among his hobbies and talents, Don enjoys painting waterfowl decoys, fishing, skiing with the family, and since Don's administrative and policy duties often keep him from the OR, he turns to Needlepoint to keep those fingers nimble. Informatics is just filled with great people. And they just really are great people. They're hardworking, they're bright, they're well-intentioned. Uh, they got their heads on right, and, and they're really interested in doing, they want to do some good. Don, under your leadership as president and CEO, AMIA is a much different place than it was five years ago. In addition to inspiring AMIA member volunteers and developing new programs, you've encouraged and mentored many individuals on the AMIA staff, including us. We congratulate you on receiving the Colin Medal. And it is our honor to have worked with you. And it is our privilege to call you a friend. Don, uh, one of the great uh, treats in my life was getting to professionally work with you closely over a period of four years. Uh, I've learned a lot from working with you, how to work with people, uh, and um, uh, I valued that time and I, I miss the time that we don't get to spend together now. And this is much deserved. Uh, we're all very happy for him and believe this is uh, uh, very suitable uh, uh, evidence of uh, the esteem in which he's held in the community and our recognition of what he's contributed to the field over many years. I'm pleased that he's been honored, whether belated or otherwise, and I know it won't go to his head because he's got too many chores back on the farm to take care of. He's got his horses to feed and the hay to get up, and so he'll just, he'll just pocket the award and go home and get to work. <laughs> That'll be good. I'm a generalist. I have a lot of interests. And, uh, it's a particular pleasure for me, I think, to have been, you know, seen as deserving this uh, by my colleagues in informatics. So thank you. 